All right then gang, so ultimately what we're doing here is building a mini simple block. So ideally we're gonna need to have a list of blocks to output in the template. So I'm gonna create some state to represent these blocks and to do that we're gonna use the use state hook to create the data since the data might change at some point in time. We might delete a block and we need React to update the DOM when that happens. So what I'm gonna do inside the home component, which as you can see, I've stripped pretty bare again. We just have a div right here and an H2. And in fact, we'll delete the H2 as well. And at the top of the function, I'm going to create some state. So an array, so we can destructure the two values. We're gonna call this blogs. And we also need a function, which I'm gonna call set blogs. And we set that equal to use state like so. Remember, we need to import that at the top for this to work. So the initial value of this state is gonna be an array of blogs. Now, I'm not gonna write these out from scratch because that's gonna take a long time and it will be quite boring for you. So let me just paste them in. It's essentially three objects. Each object represents a single blog and each one has a title property, a body property, and an author and also an ID. Now the ID is gonna be used later by React when we output this list of data. So each ID needs to be unique for each one of these items, all right? So how do we output now this data in the template? Well, if we think about it, we need a bit of template for each item so we can show maybe the title and the author for each one or something like that. Now, what we could do is hard code it down here in the template. I could do three divs, right? One for each item. But this is not beneficial for two reasons. First of all, it's time consuming and we're just repeating our code. And secondly, the data might change at some point. We might have 10 blogs in the future. And if we're hard coding that information, then it's not gonna be able to output the new blogs if we have some. Or if we delete some, it's not gonna delete them from here as well because we're hard coding each div. So we don't want to do that. Instead, what we want to do is figure out a way to cycle through this array using some kind of JavaScript in the template and output a bit of template for each one. So then it doesn't matter if there's two items in the array or 100 because it's gonna cycle through them and for each one we have, create a bit of template. So how do we do this? Well, the way we do this is by using the map method in JavaScript. So remember, the map method just cycles through an array and it can do something with each item in the array. Now, what we want to do is return a bit of template for each item as we iterate through each one. And then that template is going to be output to the browser. So remember, inside the template, we can output JavaScript or we can write JavaScript. And we do that inside curly braces. So I can take the blogs property that we have access to right here and then use the map method on this. And this fires a callback function for each item whereby each time around we want to return a bit of JSX template and that's gonna go inside parentheses. So for each iteration, as we cycle through these, we get access to the item we're currently iterating. And I'm gonna call that blog, but you can call it what you want. So on this item, each time we cycle through this array, we get access to the title property, the body, the author, and the ID. So what do I want to output for each blog? Well, first of all, a div with a class of blog hyphen preview. So this is a blog preview that's gonna be output on the homepage for each blog, and it will display maybe the title and the author, but not the body. If we want to see the body, maybe we click on the blog preview and it takes us to a different page later on. But for now, let's just output the blog preview. Now then, when we output a list like this using the map method, each root element in the template that we return must have a key property. Now, this key property is something that React uses to keep track of each item in the DOM as it outputs it. So if data changes at any point, if we remove or add new items to the array, React can keep track of those items. So you always need to add a key attribute to each item that we output, otherwise React cannot distinguish between list items in the DOM. So this is normally an ID property for each item in the array. And we have the ID property right here. So let's use that. And by the way, this must be unique. So if this was one as well, it wouldn't work because the ID is not unique, right? So it must be unique for each item. 
So I'm going to put blog ID right here blog because we have access to each item and then the ID property from that blog okay all right then so inside this all I want to do is an h2 first of all which is going to output the blog title inside curly braces and then below that I'm going to do a paragraph tag and I'll say written by and then I want the author so blog dot author like so all right then, so if we save this now, hopefully we're gonna see it in the browser. Yep, it cycles through each item and outputs the title and the author for each one. So that's how we output lists of data in React. We have the list right here and we store that in use state and then we map through that data and we take each item into that as we map through it and we output a bit of template for each one. And for each one, it has a key property, which is the ID in our case, but it can be any unique property. Now, finally, I just want to add some CSS for these things right here so it looks a bit better and it doesn't look like this. So let me go to the index.css and I'm just going to paste in these rules. There's only three. And first of all, we target blog preview, which is this div right here. And we say, give that a bit of padding and margin and a border bottom, which is this faint gray color. Then when we hover over it, give it a box shadow. So it comes out of the screen a little bit. And then the H2, the title inside it, a font size of 20 pixels, a color of this ready pink and a margin bottom of eight pixels. So very, very simple styles. But if we check this out now, it's going to look a little bit better. Okay.